This is the Bafang Max mid-drive motor. It's one of the latest additions in the Bafang motor lineup. They've been making hub motors for a long time, usually geared. And they've got the BBS-01, BBS-02 that bolt onto an existing bottom bracket, sort of where the spindle is. Whereas this one requires a special frame, one that's completely set up to be electric like this. And you can see there are those bolts right there. So it's able to kind of tuck it up a little bit more, got really good clearance, and it just cleans the look of the thing up. You know, it's very compact. I think it's pretty beautiful. I'm gonna go through some of the different stats on this thing real quick, just straight from the manual. It appears that the Bafang Max Drive comes in two different flavors, one of them running at 36 volts, the other one running at 43 volts. I believe the 43 is what's seen here on the Volton Alation mid-drive. Um, the power rating is still the same, 250 to 350 watts, and both of them are rated at 80% uh, efficiency. RPMs of 100 plus or minus 5, and the max torque at greater than or equal to 80 newton meters. That's cool because a lot of the other systems, some of the older Bosch systems, for example, were just 60, and then the the newer Bosch systems, the CX drive is about 75. So we're definitely high on torque. The chain ring they chose for this model specifically is a 38 tooth right there in the middle, but it's neat that they give you a range of choices because you know a, a larger chain ring is gonna give you a little bit more torque versus a 36 tooth smaller chain ring is going to be uh, optimal for those higher speeds, maybe like road or city cycling. It comes with that chain guard potentially, and the weight of the motor is about 8.59 pounds. That's 3.9 kilograms. You know, fa fairly heavy, uh, but that, that's the case when you've got a bunch of gears and, and sort of the conversions and trying to protect it at the bottom bracket. I noticed that the casing on this one's plastic. Uh, usually there is sort of a plastic covering and then within there's some sort of metal, but I haven't gotten that close to it. They rate the noise at less than 55 decibels, which is pretty cool. And then IP66, that's ingress rating, so dustproof, waterproof grade. Um, pretty cool, especially since this is low and not all bikes would have fenders, and so you're able to you know, have some peace of mind that, that the bike's going to, to hold up um, along with that motor. The other point worth mentioning here is that there are three different sensors helping to measure and produce power in the motor. There's uh, pedal speed, pedal torque, and then rear wheel speed. So if you're pushing down on that pedal, but you're not moving, the bike's not going to take off on you. And that's, that's a nice safety feature. However, as soon as you start to pedal even a little bit, it's fairly responsive. I was, I was really impressed with that. Some of the other companies like Yamaha, who have a mid-drive motor system for e-bikes advertise the zero cadence start. And in my experience, it's it's kind of the same thing where you still push down and it doesn't just take off on you even though they say zero cadence. I think it's just kind of a marketing thing. It's a quick, you know, quick response and it's meant to seem sporty and off-road capable. Um, the one thing that this and the Yamaha system do not have is uh, shift sensing so you know if you're shifting those gears while pedaling and pushing hard you can be combining your leg force with the motor force and that can result in mashing and, and breaking a chain or wearing down the sprocket teeth definitely more quickly than if it was just you pedaling alone so i, I usually kind of ease off and because it is torque sensing if you just if you don't pedal quite as hard while you're shifting you kind of get up to speed and then you know relax your legs a little bit but keep pedaling and shift that's the best way to do it to avoid mashing. So despite the 250 to 350 watt rating, which is the same as Bosch and many of the others, you get a lot of horsepower with this thing. <laughs> Those 80 Newton meters of torque are quite impressive. I'm gonna jump in and talk a little bit about the display and the control pad next, because I think that's pretty interesting too. Um, you can see over here we've got a five button control pad, and that gives you a lot more freedom. It means that they're able to just make those menus a little bit quicker, fewer steps. And because this is rubberized, not plastic, I actually think it's gonna be pretty durable in terms of water and even, you know, if you if you kind of crash or something. The display panel, however, even though it angles forward and backwards, is not removable. So that might be a point of concern if you're a mountain biker. 
So once it's powered on, you've got 10 increments in this battery indicator, which I really appreciate, because four and five is just, it's just not enough. You lose 25 or 20% 20 of your battery versus 10%. This just gives you a much better idea of how far you can go. One thing it does not have is a range estimator. So with Bosch, you're able to change assist level, and it dynamically estimates how much further you can go using that about amount of power and, and um, torque given how much battery you have left. This one does not attempt to do that at all. It just tells you, here's how much battery, here's your speed, and then down here, if you press the I button, you go from, let's see here, trip distance to total distance to max speed and average speed. So you, you get enough information, but it's not, it's not quite as in-depth. And then over here, there's the light button, if you've got lights built into the system like we do here, that's gonna just turn those on and off. Now, if you're a bit more of an advanced user and maybe you have the unlock code for this thing, you can press the I button twice, tap, tap, and it brings you into this menu where you can press I to confirm or plus and minus to, to change um, up and down. So let's go, you know, next. We got our miles or kilometers next backlighting sensitivity there is a backlight sensor on this so it automatically activates if it's dark and then the next screen allows you to um, basically dial in how bright the display is so a lot of adjustability there which is really nice how quickly do you want the bike to auto shut down if it's not being used and so on um, the really interesting part is this password area where you have four digits and you can you know use the manual that they provide to unlock this and then you can actually change the top speed um, in this case, because we're using a 48 volt system, uh, it's, it's going to be a, a little bit more capable, both in terms of climbing and top speed. Uh, you know, legal class one, no throttle would be 20 miles per hour, but I've been able to get this up to, you know, 26 plus miles per hour down on the flats. I'm going to test that a little bit later. For now, I think what I'm going to do is put it in the fifth level of assist and do some climbing on these trails and just you know see how that performs um, give you give you some perspective on shift sensing as well so for the first part of this trail i'm going to shift hard as if i don't care i'm just pedaling as i would and i'm shifting and you might hear some mashing then i'm going to do the same shifting sequence but i'm going to ease off a little bit and because this is a torque sensor you might notice there's just a lot less mashing and and that's how i would encourage you to operate. Okay, so I'm in the easiest gear back there. We only have one sprocket up front. The easiest gear, I'm gonna pedal, and I'm just gonna shift up without taking any pressure off the pedals. This happens a lot for people when they're climbing and maybe they haven't done a lot of mountain biking and they, they just feel like, oh, okay, you know, I'm, I'm ready to shift up. And I'm gonna do the same thing uh, shifting down to those easy gears because that happens when people hit a hill they maybe they weren't expecting or prepared for or they have to slow down because someone in front of them slows down or swerves and then they have to shift quickly um, but in so doing they're not able to shift smoothly Okay, so that was the rough shifting. Um, this time I'm gonna try to do the same sort of terrain, the same shifting sequence, but I'm gonna ease off a little bit and just see how that works. Not bad, a lot smoother. It really doesn't take too much extra effort or slow me down as much, but you know, easing off like that definitely saves your sprockets. <laughs> yes, really. For this next test, I'm gonna climb a fairly steep hill and I'm going to put this up in the highest assist level and just see how that performs. Okay, I'm in the third gear. I'm gonna try to climb this fairly steep hill in front of us just smoothly. I'm gonna pedal. This should give you some 
idea of how, how much torque the bike is offering and how the motor sounds under pressure. So again, this is gear number three in terms of easiest. I'm very impressed. I mean, I didn't have to shift down further. I was able to pedal relatively smooth. I didn't stand up. I didn't have to overexert myself. The motor definitely performs, definitely gives you power and those 80 Newton meters of torque that they estimate, um, they really kick in. That's awesome. This section of trail is relatively smooth. I thought it'd be a good chance to just pedal at higher cadence and give you an idea of how the motor sounds. Um, you know when you're pedaling faster and just a whole range of speeds so i'll start out from the lowest gear and work my way through so they say this motor has a 100 plus or minus 5 rpm and you'll notice that in that lowest gear I got to a point where I was spinning faster than it could go. That's the case with most mid drives. That's when you've got to shift up. So if you really want to hit those highest top speeds, you have to shift up to those harder gears. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and get some more speed. we were going downhill but we topped 28 miles per hour and I'm not certain but I think I could still hear the motor going in the background so so that's the thing it's once you unlock it the motor just keeps going you might not get as much power and again the rpm maxes out when you get to your highest gear and you're pedaling as fast as you can the motor can't really do much more at that point but it's definitely a capable speed motor if you're using it on a speed pedal like, like this okay we're looking at a nice, long, smooth piece of tarmac. This is gonna be the speed test. We're not on the bumpy gravel anymore, so you should be able to hear the motor even better than before. Um, let's give it a go. By the way, we are in the highest level of assist. That's number five. This is unlocked. We're going just as fast as the motor can take us. Oh, we did it. We hit 28 miles per hour there. That's when I stopped pedaling. It, it took a little while. Definitely had to shift through the gears. This is not unlike other mid-drive electric bikes I've tested. It worked on par and was very quiet, pretty responsive. Uh, definitely a lot of fun. When you get around 25 miles per hour though, you have to work a lot harder because just the air resistance at that speed. You know, it's, it's perfectly calm right now. I'm in Colorado at high altitude. The air is thinner than it would be at sea level, so the air resistance should be lower. Um, yeah, I don't know. Definitely nice to have those higher speeds, but you do have to work with it. You do have to work for it here. Just thought it would be fun to catch a view from the other side, so we're gonna do the same thing, but you're gonna be looking at the left side of the motor this time.
try to demonstrate just how sensitive the torque sensor is because I think it's really good actually. Um, I'm going to pedal slowly, gently, and try not to activate the motor even though it's on the fifth level of assist. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of power and you can see how quickly it responds. Well, big thanks to Volton for letting us try out their new installation with a 48 volt pack, the high powered Bafang Max Drive. It's been a whole lot of fun and you know I've been really impressed with just how well this thing performed compared to some of the more expensive higher end mid drives from Bosch, Impulse, Yamaha, even Bros. It was quiet. No, there's no torque sensing but Yamaha doesn't have that, Bros doesn't have that. Um, if you shift properly I think it can work great and, and it certainly looks good to me. I was tapping on it earlier, you know, it has the plastic case. The wires on this one are run underneath, which isn't quite as clean, but you know, it's, it's compact. It would really blend in if this was a darker colored frame. And the display and everything, while not removable, while it does not have USB charging ports or anything, you know, you, you save some money, potentially 500 plus dollars um, on a bike like this and Volton being kind of a mid-price brand. It did pretty well. We were all the way up there on that ridge, not the highest one, but kind of in the middle. We climbed right up that. We didn't have a problem. And, uh, you know, I certainly had fun. So if you want to see the full written review on this bike, I've got that back at electricbikereview.com. And I'll be, you know, going on down the road looking for other bikes to review in the future and other systems. I hope this helped you out. If you've had this bike, maybe you're in uh, Europe or Australia or something where it's I think it's been out a little bit longer feel free to chime in on things that you like or dislike other feedback maybe corrections you know I do my best to uh, get the the best information I can find but um, I certainly appreciate your help so ride safe